Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Today, we're going to talk about pygmies. Now, many of you have already heard us talk with Bree Keaton. This is the lady that walks and prays over cities and pulls down strongholds, loosening the angels to do warfare, reclaiming the land for God. But in 2008, God spoke one word to her in an audible voice, the word pygmies. Then a week later, he spoke, go save the pygmies. And now she has led, with the help of God, some 45,000 pygmies. I'm sure the the number's been increased. We'll hear from her in just a second now. She's been able to lead 45,000 pygmies to Jesus. And she goes around speaking all across the nation about these pygmies and this miraculous story of how God has sent her, this white lady, (laughs) I mean real white lady, uh, thin, blonde hair, into the deepest, darkest jungles of the Congo where they've never even seen a white person before. She has many miracles and many stories of miraculous protection from the Lord. The glory cloud is uh, from God that follows her every place she goes. As soon as she touches down in the Congo, that glory cloud follows her every place. And she's just come out with a brand new book to be able to show you and tell you even more about it. So, Bree Keaton, welcome back to the Prophecy Club. Great to be on with you, Stan. Okay, so for those people that have not heard any of the story, give us a brief overview of how you come to be where you're at, and then let's hear about your latest adventure into the Congo. It's an exciting time, isn't it, to be alive when so much uh, is going south with our world, to be able to finally do something that reaches a totally unreached people group. And that's why I believe God sent me, because I'm just such a passionate, on-fire person. I'll just do anything he tells me to do. And when he told me, ordered me, in an audible voice to go rescue pygmies, go to the pygmies, he spoke to me three times in an audible voice. I jumped at the challenge, because I love a good challenge. And off we went to the Congo, and uh, I was able to start rescuing pygmies right away. But that's where I discovered with my first little group of pygmies that I found in the deep jungle, that they were being eaten by rebel soldiers. This was such a profound shock to me. I never even thought there were very many pygmies in this world anyway. I thought maybe they were extinct or something other than National Geographic. But when I discovered that there were lots of pygmies and that about two-thirds had been eaten by rebel soldiers... I knew why God sent me there, because I'm a warrior at heart, and I knew that it was my job in this life to fight for the lives of the most hated people on earth, the pygmies of Africa, and rescue them in a way that they could be sustainable, that they could find a new way of life in order to preserve their lives and culture. So uh, my first little group of pygmies, there were only 200 that first experience. And they told me, we're being eaten, most of our tribe is gone. I came home in shock, and soon the Lord spoke to me for the third time and said, go rescue pygmies, audible voice. You can't fight God. You've got to do what God says. So I just started raising the funds, and off I went to the Congo, and we've been there I don't know how many times, maybe 20 times. My team has been there, oh, 20, 30 more times. They live there, and so I send them in constantly. Matter of fact... They're up in the Northeast right now where Ebola broke out last year, and uh, they're rescuing more pygmies up there right now because of the rain. Our villages are in trouble right now because of the rainy season, and I guess the mud and the water has washed away a lot of the houses I built them. But uh, I want to tell you that I've rescued over 58,000 pygmies at this time. It's closer to 59,000 right now. And uh, those pygmies are living for Jesus. They are living for him. They live in villages. I built them, so I built 20 villages. And uh, they worship him. All their songs and dances are out of the Bible. And uh, their whole lives focused on serving the Lord. So this has been a transformation in its most seminal way, most, most basic way, little lives transformed. Now, pygmies live in the deep, deep jungles, and they live in trees. That's for their own safety. And the rebels go in there and shoot them out of the trees or chase them as they're hunting and gathering. And this, uh, for those 58,000, that has ended. They now live in villages, and uh, they're very productive. They plant, they harvest, they raise animals now because I've taught them how to do all those things. 
and so uh, their lives will be preserved until this war is over between the government of the Congo and the rebels. So uh, now I've come out with a brand new book called Pygmies, Forsaken in the Heart of Darkness. Now, you know, a little over a year ago, I guess a year and three months ago, I made a DVD with you called Go Save the Pygmies. That was a great time, and uh, we I think that video is just wonderful, don't you? I think your talk turned out fabulous. I think that everybody needs to get the DVD. As a matter of fact, since you brought it up, I'll go ahead and say something about it. Not only are you going through explaining and showing pictures, but you have, I believe it's six video clips so they can actually see what these pygmies look like and they're dancing, they're praising to the Lord. So the DVD, of course, is very important for the visual pictures and there's nothing that a book can do like that. But on the other hand, your book can bring details that you just couldn't get into a DVD, right? That's right. So you know how it is because you've written books. When you sit there writing, you can go into a lot more detail. And in a live situation, you can't do that. So that's one of the reasons I'm really excited about the new book. Coming up with this title was really fun, too. I remember that, uh, of course, from my history lessons when I was in school, there was a great explorer that went across Africa named Dr. David Livingston. As he walked across Africa, he had a lot of adventures, and a lot of his uh, people were killed or died of disease. Finally, everybody just thought he was lost. So this other explorer went to find him, and when he found him, he said, Dr. Livingston, I presume. (laughs) Remember that story from your history? Livingston actually explored the Congo. And later, now that was in the mid-1800s. Toward the end of the 1800s, there was another writer that wrote a book called Heart of Darkness, and it was based in the Congo. It had pygmies in it, but uh, Heart of Darkness came from something that David Livingston said. He said the Congo is the heart of darkness, and he said it because of the darkness of the place. It's mostly jungle, even to this day, but the darkness spiritually so intense there. Now, along comes Bree Keaton. That's me. And I'm looking at this darkness, but but we carry the light. That's who we are. That's who we were born to be. And so the light all around us, it goes before us, behind us, through us, because when the Lord is with us and he has called us to something, he shines his light right into that darkness. And that was the passion of my heart, to show the true way and the light of Jesus, the Messiah, to these little ones that have never known anything but voodoo, tree god worship, and fear. Their whole lives just full of fear. And now I come into the villages, I drive up on my land cruisers, I look at the village, and out they run with smiling faces. They'll dance for me. All their songs and dances now are praising the Lord. And I just see that God has stretched forth his hand to a totally hated deserted, rejected people group, and has made their lives significant. It's awesome to be part of that. So the title of my book is kind of exciting because I wanted to convey to people how terrible it is, what's going on there. So I just said, subtitle, Forsaken, because truly they have been forsaken. Nobody cares about them. And even the politicians in that country care nothing for pygmies because they can't vote, they can't write or read. But you see, we're changing all that. It's actually a fact. I haven't ever told this, and it isn't in the book, Stan, but my lead scout uh, has negotiated uh, to be the representative of a large group of pygmies in a certain area, and for the first time ever, they're going to vote. What do you think of that? Awesome. Now you've got the righteousness in them, the righteousness of Christ, so they'll vote correctly. Isn't that awesome? This is something that's uh, it's shifting the mindset of how the people in that country and across Africa will look at pygmies, because in my villages, they're becoming economically viable. We teach them all the animal husbandry and the planting and harvesting, so they're doing very well, unless there's some big epidemic, you know. 
they're doing very well. But anyway, the, the subtitle, Forsaken in the Heart of Darkness. So I was keying into that uh, David Livingston statement and the subsequent book by Joseph Conrad. What about the rebels that have lost their easy food source? And uh, what are they doing about this? Well, that's, uh, that's something I'm glad you brought that up because it just so happens that my whole team's in there now, as I said, and they're doing another rescue because the houses have fallen down. But part of the problem is the rebels. They're just besieging the whole country. Now, uh, we were there uh, last summer. We've been there, not necessarily me every time, because I send my team in over and over to do follow-up missions. But my team has been there five times just, just recently, in and out. And this is another one. And what they're finding is the rebels are besieging the regions where, I, where the pygmies are, which... Uh, if you ever saw my DVD, you know that we go into the war zones to rescue pygmies, not the peaceful places. So the rebels are very thick there. They've never attacked the pygmy villages, but they are attacking all the other villages around there and making a lot of chaos. So if there are pygmies out in the jungle that have never come in, never been saved, never begun to dwell in our villages, they are very vulnerable. And it turns out, Stan, there are a lot of them that haven't yet surrendered and come into the villages. Now, my team's up there building more houses, reconstructing fallen-down houses, and helping with medicine and prayer and, of course, you know, instruction in the Bible. So they're there right now pleading with me to send more money so they can build more houses because more pygmies are pouring in because of the fear and because of the rebels. So it's a very big deal. I need a lot of help right now. Okay, if someone were to call and say, Bree, how much money do you really need uh, at this particular time, what would you say? We'll be right back after this message. I've heard the testimonies of over 35 different people that have died and gone to heaven. But I think Dean Braxton's testimony is the best simply because he spent the most time there. He spent an hour and 45 minutes in heaven. He tells you what Jesus and the Father and the throne looks like and our new Jerusalem and our mansions, whether it's a pyramid or it's a square. Everything is based on love and is alive. How we communicate, whether we talk or just by thoughts, how we move, do we walk or do we fly, our relationships with our families and others, and our glorified bodies and garments and what they look like. Normally valued at $30, but you can call a Prophecy Club and get it right now for just a gift of $15 or more. That's 785-266-1112. I spent 45 minutes in heaven by Dean Braxton. 785-266-1112 or Prophecy prophecyclub.com. Brothers and sisters, I have been doing the Prophecy Club for over 20 years. We've had about 150 speakers make about 300 different titles, all dealing with Bible prophecy. But may I say, I think that these two DVDs may be some of the most important DVDs to get if you want to understand what may be coming in the near future. The first one is talking about how America is the final Babylon. The second one is talking about timelines, how soon the tribulation may start. And they claim that the tribulation will start in 2018 and be all over by 2025. They have lots and lots of research to be able to say that. Get both of these DVDs, valued at $30 each, but now you can get both of them for a gift of just $30 to the Prophecy Club. 785-266-1112 785-266-1112 or online at prophecyclub.com. In Time Babylon and Prophetic Timelines. And now, back to the program. It's a very big deal. I need a lot of help right now. Okay, if someone were to call and say, Bree, how much money do you really need uh, at this particular time, what would you say? That would be a touchy subject because there is such great need. But to uh, to finish the project we started last summer with 8,336 pygmies, uh, to finish that project, I need around 38,000 to build their houses. And then to help where we are right now, and this is an urgent thing, to get these houses under construction, to move the rebels back just by the sheer power of the living God. When we're there, the presence of God actually chases them back or forces them back. So to finish that project, we need around 20000 to reconstruct and build some more. 
And then to go in and build all the wells we need to with the 20 villages, we need about 100,000 for that. So you can see I could just keep going like that. Every village needs a lot of stuff. Are they staying out of the jungle and they're actually living in these houses, or have many of them returned to the jungle, returned to the problem? <clears throat> well, a few have returned to the jungle, but it's a very small number. The vast majority of the pygmies that we've rescued, they, they will still serve Jesus, even if they go back to the jungle. But I want to clarify this. We have been training them, you see, in the villages. I've hired pastors that kind of come and go out of the villages, and they'll go, like, I'll build them in clusters of three or four. They'll go in and teach them the Word, and then they'll move on to the next village. And some of those pygmies get real excited and real full of the presence of God, and they will go back to the jungle to try to reach the unreached in their own people group. So some of those numbers represent missionary pygmies. And uh, so that's why I say that the number that just desert the villages and go back to their other way of life is minuscule to none. So what you're really saying is that you take the gospel, but it doesn't just fall upon deaf ears once they've received Christ, then God is raising up within them pastors from their own flock and pastors after his own heart to teach and to train. So the pygmies are now turning into missionaries to be evangelists and pastors to their own kind, right? Right. It was always my vision to find five young men in every village that we would train more intensely and then release them to go back into the jungles. Now, they have to be willing. They know what it entails. They know it may mean that they'll just die because the rebels will get them. But they will not die without being a martyr for the cause of Christ, and they get that better than you and me. They totally get it. You realize that what you're doing normally doesn't happen. (laughs) <laughs> you you realize that many missionaries have gone to many nations trying to reach many, I mean, I'm going to say thousands, maybe millions through the years, have tried to do what you're doing, and they, you know, they went and ministered to a few, but they haven't had the kind of success that you've had. I mean, <laughs> would you say 79,000, and now people no, no, no. within... It's, it's 58,000 and counting. It's close okay. to 59,000. Right. okay. 58,000 pygmies, and they are, many of them, turning into pastors and teachers themselves. I mean, God is just turning them all into Christians and churches right there. Well, yeah, we release them. If they have the zeal in their heart, honestly, it doesn't take much. You can tell a pygmy, Jesus is Lord. He wants to save your soul. He wants to heal your body. They'll get saved and healed right on the spot, I know, because it's happened so often. And then... Uh, the first thing they say to me, Stan, this is why I love pygmy so much. This is the first thing they say is, teach us so we can go back to our own people. Hallelujah. Well, and if we could only means, hear that in America. <laughs> yeah, but what that really means is I'm ready to die for this cause. Wow. And it's just that quick. Now, how if many they go per- back to what, the jungle, they could die. What percentage of the pygmies actually receive Christ? Well, all the 58 and counting, have received Jesus the Messiah. They have, every single one. So that's why I can say that number are saved. Now, there are others that kind of float in. When they see, well, they've got houses, they've got food, there are pygmies that will come in, but they don't have any depths in there. Some are not saved, and they'll come and join the villages. But after a while, they go back to the jungle. Now, some stay. If they stay, they get saved. If they go back, they don't. So the 58,000 is a solid number, but the number that come and go fluctuate. Now, how many helpers do you have that are actually living there? There's one of the problems. See, you said, how much money do I need? I could use as much as anybody would ever give because I want to hire a pastor for every single village. Then I want to hire a teacher for every single village. And sometimes we need a nurse or a doctor because epidemics break out kind of regularly in the deep jungles. Okay, so uh, how much does it cost to hire a pastor for a month? Generally, this is this going to blow your mind. I can get a guy to come for around 50 to to $100 a month. It depends on the area. And how many pastors do you need? I need 20. What? 
We can do that. Prophecy Club supporters, we can do that. We can help you get that kind of money. We can help you get this other kind of money. Nurses cost $300 a month, and doctors cost $1,000 a month. Plus, medicine is about $5,000 a year per tribe. So if I wanted to send a doctor in to make diagnosis and then a nurse to follow up, now we're talking about more money. But if we want to save lives, that's what we do. But we never just, you know, talk about medicine. We talk about the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And any doctor or nurse we send in there has to understand that our main thrust is the healing of the Lord. Uh, absolutely. And then they're there to just do inoculations, maybe do surgeries if somebody has a problem. Maybe they broke their ankle, you know. Well, the doctor can help with that. And so that's the kind of thing. We need help in every single village. Okay, what about those proclaimers? Are you still taking more of those and tell us what they are? Yeah, I need a lot more proclaimers. What happens is eventually they just wear out. They're solar powered, they're seven pounds, and they're the New Testament in a language that they can understand, a basic language, not a dialect, but a basic language. So be Swahili or So they can charge these by the sun and then listen to the word all day long, and they are getting worn out from being used? Eventually, the jungle rot gets them. Let me tell you, it's 90 to 110 degrees and almost 100% humidity. All the time. So nothing really lasts that long in the jungle. But those proclaimers are pretty sturdy. They last maybe three years. Okay, what about uh, Coney and his outfits? I heard someplace or saw in the news that some military had been sent in to try to find and eliminate him. What's the latest there? Well, I don't want to laugh out loud. We know where he is. I wonder why all the nations on Earth that are supposedly hunting him don't know where he is. So that they're just hunting and hunting forever and ever. It's like <laughs> hunting for a needle in a haystack. But let me tell you, we know they know where he is. Dan, they could go get him if they wanted to. Let's just leave it at that. Oh, but, yes. Well, I understand politics. Politics uh-huh. is what causes most of the problems when it can be most of the solutions. But nevertheless. Yeah. Okay, so, so he tell- has a lot of people that help him, and he's always raising up new young bucks to be generals. So even if you took out Coney, you would not stop the problem because there's lots of little warlords all over the place, some big, some small. One just surrendered last spring. And uh, he surrendered in the Congo, and he is in jail currently. Ten more sprung up in his place. They're not a, the big name, but it doesn't take much. They're just continuing this fight, and the chief reason is amazing natural resources in the Congo. Everybody's fighting over that. So it's territory. Okay, resources. so tell us, tell us a little bit about your book. Pygmies Forsaken in the Heart of Darkness. It's a $16 book. It's actually fifteen ninety five, but I hate those five cent deals. The book is dedicated to the Lord, and it is all His work. All I'm doing is telling you what what I've done in His name. But I explain about the war in the Congo. That's the first chapter, and there's there are fifty pictures in there to you know just to illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. So people are going to be excited to see all those pictures. I talk about all the miracles. There are whole chapters for the miracles. I talk about the pygmy bride and the significance. I talk about the transformation. But there's so much exciting stuff because at the end, I show you how to rise up and do what God called you to do. There's a clarion call in there for the for God's people to rise out of their comas. <laughs> a lot of them in a coma. To rise out of their complacency and passivity and to arise to their own destiny. So the book is really just laying down a challenge for God's people, and I think everybody's going to love it, and uh, I think everybody needs this book. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, if you'd like to have the book by the name of Pygmies, Forsaken in the Heart of Darkness, then that's available through your Prophecy Club for a gift of $16 or more. If you'd like to have the DVD alone, it's normally $30, We're going to make that available for a $15 donation. And here's what we're going to do. If you get both of them, both the book and the DVD, we're going to make that available for a gift of just $30. $30 gets you both DVD and book. Here's how you get it. Go to prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. I'll repeat it, 785-266-1112. 
785-266-1112. One more time, 785-266-1112, or go to prophecyclub.com. Pygmies in the Heart of Darkness for a gift of 16 or the DVD, normally 30 for 15 or you can get both of them for a gift of $30 or more. And if you'd like to give to help support the Pygmies, then send your best donation to the Prophecy Club and note it is for the Pygmies. As you heard her say, she's needing anywhere from $38,000 up for these Pygmies, and I know that God will bless you powerfully because they cannot repay you. And Bree, thank you for being on. We'll have to have you back once again. Thanks a lot for having me. It's a great time today. All right. Well, once again, brothers and sisters, thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers, and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. I've heard the testimonies of over 35 different people that have died and gone to heaven. But I think Dean Braxton's testimony is the best simply because he spent the most time there. He spent an hour and 45 minutes in heaven. He tells you what Jesus and the Father and the throne looks like and our new Jerusalem and our mansions, whether it's a pyramid or it's a square. Everything is based on love and is alive. How we communicate, whether we talk or just by thoughts, how we move, do we walk or do we fly, our relationships with our families, and others, and our glorified bodies and garments and what they look like. Normally valued at $30, but you can call a Prophecy Club and get it right now for just a gift of $15 or more. That's 785-266-1112. I spent 45 minutes in heaven by Dean Braxton. 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. We've had about 150 speakers make about 300 different titles, all dealing with Bible prophecy. But may I say, I think that these two DVDs may be some of the most important DVDs to get if you want to understand what may be coming in the near future. The first one is talking about how America is the final Babylon. The second one is talking about timelines, how soon the tribulation may start. And they claim that the tribulation will start in 2018 and be all over by 2025. They have lots and lots of research to be able to say that. Get both of these DVDs, valued at $30 each, but now you can get both of them for a gift of just $30 to the Prophecy Club, 785-266-1112, or online at prophecyclub.com. In Time Babylon and Prophetic Timelines. Hemp number two gift offer. You get a graphic new look at the second coming of Armageddon, the millennium, heaven on earth, and the final rebellion, Satan's assault against the New Jerusalem. That's three brand new DVDs that will be made this coming weekend, all valued at $90, $30 each. You can get all of them, all three of them, for a gift of just $40. It helps the ministry, and it'll get a lot of really good information into you. Three DVDs valued at $90 for a gift of $40. You can call Prophecy Club 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. And it's the HAMP number two gift offer. Three DVDs valued at 90 for a gift of $40 or more, 785-266-1112 or prophecyclub.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers and thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. As prophecy students, we know an emergency is heading our way. And the average person can go over 30 days without food, but no more than three days without clean water. In the event of an emergency, you must have clean water almost immediately. One of the primary causes of death in emergency is not lack of food, but rather drinking contaminated water. You can run water from a mud puddle through a Berkey and drink it. You can have clean water when others are getting sick from drinking bug-infested water. Your filter must work without pressurized water or electricity, which is why the missionaries choose Berkey. You can get a Go Berkey for $139, but I recommend you get the Royal Berkey with four filters for $364. I personally use the Crown with eight filters for all my daily water needs. A Royal Berkey looks like a large stainless steel coffee pot, nine inches wide by 20 inches tall with four black filters. It processes over a gallon an hour for a gift of $364. Call 785-266-1112. Ask for the Royal Berkey, 785-266-1112, or the Crown Berkey with eight filters. Or see the entire line of Berkeys by going to prophecyclub.com. 